Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner and today's video is going to be a doozy. This is going to be a budget 12 inch subwoofer shootout. Now I want to state up front, if you're not familiar with my channel and what I do here, I do reviews for audio components that is based heavily on objective data. And the reason I do that is because I feel firmly that when I just use words like fast bass or slow bass or transient or dynamic or hollow or bright or spacious. All those words are great if you have something to tie them to. And you can't tie them to anything if you don't have some kind of a tangible piece of information like data. And that's what I try to do here on my channel. So with that said, what I'm going to do today is talk to you about six popular subwoofers that are all in the budget price range of about $170 to about $300. And they're all 12 inch subwoofers. I did a poll on my channel uh, a couple months ago, maybe even further back than that. And I have been listening to everyone, all of you who have suggested different subwoofers that I test. Now keep in mind that I cannot test every subwoofer under the sun because I am in fact paying for all of these subwoofers out of my own pocket. I paid 1200 bucks for five subwoofers and I was loaned an additional subwoofer by my buddy Joe from Joe and Tail and I will be testing that subwoofer as well. I really would have loved to put in everybody's favorite, but the, it's just not feasible. And going along that same line, what I will ask you to do is I use affiliate links. And after this review, if you feel compelled or the desire to buy a subwoofer that I've reviewed, whether I liked it or not, please consider using one of my affiliate links. I'll drop them in the description below because that helps me out I get about four to 6% on each one, depending on what you buy. Now to make up 1200 bucks, I would have to sell about 150 to 200 different subwoofers, depending on which ones you're interested in. So this is not a get rich quick scheme. It's just me asking you to help me recoup some of my losses. Oh, and I cannot forget to say this part because some of you will ring me for it. The prices that I'm talking about in this video today are today's prices. I can't help if something comes out of stock or is no longer available or becomes popular because of this video and prices increase a little bit. That's out of my control. All I can do is provide the information that is current as of today. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I encourage you to just kind of keep an eye on, on the market. If you see something you like and the price has gone up, maybe wait a couple of weeks, maybe wait a month or something before you buy it and let the price come back down. And uh, yeah, so with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the subwoofers that I have reviewed in this video. And then we'll talk about the data. We'll talk about some other testing that I've done, and then I'll provide you maybe my final recommendations. We're going to kick things off with the Yamo C912 sub. And as you can see, it does have a tweed grill, which I will pop off real fast for you to expose the cone. Spinning around, you can see it's got some veneer. It's a grayish color veneer on it. And then on the side, it has the Yamo emblazoned on it. On the back, you've got frequency adjustment for the low pass filter. You've got a volume knob and you've got RCA inputs as well as a phase 0180 flip and a power input. Now note, this does not have the auto power on if you wanted to have signal sensing via the RCA inputs, which a lot of these other subwoofers do have that feature. Next up, we have the Dayton Sub 1200. It has a little grill that you can pull off here to reveal the subwoofer. And then I guess it's just a vinyl wrap around it. I will say that the quality isn't quite that great. I mean, the vinyl is kind of peeling off down here at the bottom. And there's a couple other places I noticed where it was kind of peeling off too. Now, you know, I mean, this is just normal, normal use. I mean, taking it in and out of the house. So uh, overall finish, you know, not that great, but it's not terrible for the price, I guess I would say. The power on, auto, and off. Gain knob, crossover knob, uh, RCA inputs. It also has high-level inputs and high-level outputs, which is a nice feature. And then it has a phase rotation 0 to 180 knob. Next up is the Bic F12. And same finish as the others, you know, a black veneer. Nothing special here does have a grill, which will pop off here to reveal the aluminum cone, which, you know, honestly, I kind of like it. I think it's kind of neat. Uh, the foam surround here, 
you know, honestly, to me, kind of cheapens it up, especially when you can see the little bit of, mm, I guess it's just not a clean cut for the surround where it meets the edge of the cone there. Uh, it may be hard to tell in the video, but you can kind of just trust me what I'm talking about here. Then we'll spin it around to the back and we can see it's got several for input. And it has a switch analog, uh, or I should say digital receiver or pro logic receiver. And you can use whichever one you need for your setup, volume knob, frequency crossover knob, off auto and on power right here, zero 180 for phase, and then high level inputs and outputs as well, which is an, again, a nice feature. And then I do like the fact that it has the fuse external. So you can just turn this out if you need to, if the fuse were to pop and easily replace the fuse and then the power input. Next up, we've got the OSD Travoce 12 DSP. And this actually has a nice, just overall really good looking finish. And uh, one thing that's different about this particular speaker is it is a passive radiator design. So behind the grill on the front, you've got the main woofer right here. And then on the sides, you'll notice you've got passive radiators. Whereas the rest of the subwoofers that I'm testing in this batch are all uh, vented speakers. Now, on the back, we have the plate amp with the controls. You've got high level input as well as RCA or LFE dedicated input, volume knob, and then you've got your frequency low pass filter. You've got phase zero to 180. You've got auto on off switch and you've got the DSP. Now, the thing about the DSP here is that you can use an app from your phone and I did use it and it allows you a multitude of parametric EQ bands, which is a great feature to have. But unfortunately, after all of my testing was done, it was determined that this subwoofer just doesn't have the output capability that some of the other subwoofers do. And therefore, it really wasn't worth my time to go into the details about the DSP because it simply just isn't able to keep up output wise with some of the other subwoofers. But I will say that if you don't have DSP available, that is a really great feature about this subwoofer and it probably would be the saving grace for it in my personal opinion. Next up, we've got the Klipsch R12 SW. And yes, this is actually the subwoofer that many people have bought from Costco. And that's one of the reasons so many people wanted me to test this particular subwoofer because it goes on sale quite a bit for somewhere in the 150 uh, USD range. But on Amazon, it's around $200 or so, give or take. So I'll pop the grill off and you can see this goldish copper clips color that they are very well known for that makes them stand out above the crowd. Uh, it does have like a nice satin. I don't know that this is veneer. It almost feels, I'm not saying it's anodized, but it almost feels like it's anodized. They, it, the finish is, is good, I would say. And on the back, you know, you see the port here, move the cord out of the way. We've got the gain knob. We've got the low pass filter, auto on off switch available, phase zero to 180 and the RCA line inputs. And lastly, we have the Infinity Sub R12. This one has a pretty nice grill. It's plastic with the grill cloth wrapped around the front of it. It has a little emblem Infinity on there. I don't know, it's just kind of, a more classy grill and you can see the cone behind it the infinity tag on the front the the box overall is like most of them it's just kind of a veneer uh, it does have a nice little shape to it as you can see it tapers off toward the back and then on the back side we've got rca line level input subwoofer for gain uh, power mode phase and crossover adjustability with the on off switch and the thing that i wanted to point out was the lf trim zero plus and plus two and plus four. Now this is actually something I did not test because I prefer to test these things as they are. And I honestly didn't have time to go back and retest with these little switches activated. So if you're interested in this subwoofer, that's something you may want to play around with. One thing that I always like to do when I get a new subwoofer to test is to do some rub and buzz testing. And to do that, I just use a simple app on my iPhone called Signal Gen. And then I sweep a band of frequencies and listen for any rattles or resonances that may be coming from the subwoofer itself. It's important to do this kind of testing outdoors because when you do so indoors, 
you can often get a lot of buzzing and rattles from the room itself, from the windows, to the walls, to pictures, anything like that. So again, I suggest that if you are to replicate this kind of testing, you do so outdoors. I got to the Eclipse subwoofer and I couldn't get it to play music. But the crazy thing was when I would unplug it, it would pop and I would hear a little bit of music as the subwoofer turned off. So I had to write this subwoofer off as dead at this point and therefore I can't recommend it. All the data that I'm about to show you was captured using Clipple hardware and software. And if you're interested in how I captured some of this data, I'll drop a link in the card above. You can follow that and check that out at a later time. The first graphic I'm going to show you is frequency response. And this shows you how the sound pressure uh, reacts over frequency. And when you talk about frequency, it's really quite simple. Low frequencies are the low bass and higher frequencies in this particular image is going to be higher bass. Now, most subwoofers are going to play about 80 hertz down to about 20 hertz. Uh, 20 hertz is usually kind of the cutoff point for audibility. And then when you get below 20 hertz down into the teens or even single digits, that's when you start to really pressurize a room and you start to feel it in your gut and in your soul. So the lower the bass goes, probably the better for most people. And this review, however, what you'll find is many of these subwoofers don't go much below, I don't know what, maybe 30 hertz or so. And that's kind of expected in this budget range. If you want more output, you're going to have to go to probably about the four, five, six hundred dollar region to get serious output at lower frequencies. So that kind of sets the stage for the limitations of these subwoofers. What you care about in the frequency response graph is you care about linearity. You don't want a speaker that peaks at one particular frequency because that often sounds muddy or bloated. It can sound like it's ringing. And generally what I find is that is what people call slow bass. When it takes a long time to decay, uh, fast bass might be really punchy, quick bass. And usually you're going to get that from a more linear response out of your subwoofer and even other speakers as well, like bookshelf and floor standing speakers. But that's for a different topic another day. I've got seven different subwoofers here. And remember, I only tested six. So where's the extra? Well, that's because the OSD has DSP. So I've enabled it and I've also disabled it and provided you here the results so you can see both. Now I know this is a lot to, to look at and, and take in and understand all at one time, but let's just try to see through all of the stuff here and see if we can make something out of it. And since I've already had the privilege of seeing this data before a few times and studied it, I'm going to go ahead and help you skip some of the fluff. The BIC F12, it does okay, but it's not one of the better ones. So let's get rid of the BIC F12. Now we're left with some of these others. The OSD 12 with the DSP active, you can see it doesn't really get low. So let's go ahead and get rid of the OSD. Now we're left with this. These results are pretty good. And again, remember we're kind of, we're level matched right around 100 Hertz. So I'm kind of having to visually bring these down. Uh, so I'm looking at these and I'm seeing the Dayton sub 1200. It kind of wants to roll off a little bit earlier. And let's see, the Clips R12 has got a bit of a bass boost right in this area. So in my opinion, I'm going to go ahead and dump these two. And now we're left with the ones that I feel are probably the better of the bunch. They're not the best, but they're the better of the bunch. And I think out of these, I would probably say the Infinity Sub R12 is possibly the most linear. Uh, the OSD Travoce 12 DSP. Uh, it looks okay, but this little hump right through here is not very linear. So I'm going to dump that one too. And I'm going to say that just based on frequency response alone, the ones I'm more interested in are the Infinity Sub R12 and the Yamo C912. And now we move on to the main portion of this testing, which is the CEA 2010 testing. And the CEA 2010 testing is basically just taking a tone burst of a certain frequency and hitting the speaker with that tone burst and it makes a boop sound or a boop sound. And the microphone captures that sound, but then it also captures the harmonics. 
And if the harmonics exceed a certain threshold, which is defined by the CEA 2010 standard, is the industry standard, then that means the test is failed at that point. And then that is where the maximum SPL is for that particular frequency. And this just shows you the maximum SPL for a given tone for each of the subwoofers that I've tested. And the thing we're looking for here is really which one's the highest. I also care about linearity, but most people just care about the maximum. And in terms of the maximum, the Infinity R12, sub R12, is really the winner here. And that's pretty darn good. I mean, 31.5 hertz, 106.3 dB. That's pretty good for the sale price that I've typically seen it at of 170 bucks. And then if we go to the next one, let's see, the OSD Travoce in the mid band is the second highest, but you can see it very much falls short in the lower frequency. So let's focus on the lower frequencies. Klipsch 12SW, and it looks pretty good. And then the black is gonna be the BIC F12. So is that right? Yeah, the BIC F12. So the BIC does pretty well in terms of output capability. But here's a surprising thing, and this is actually something I really am fond of on a more personal note, is that the Yamo C912, while it doesn't have the highest numbers, it's more linear. It has probably the second best numbers in the very low frequencies, third, maybe fourth best in the mid to upper subwoofer frequencies at least. And then it's on the lower end in the higher of the subwoofer frequencies. So through this region right around here. Uh, so from this data alone, again, the Infinity R12 is gonna be, I hate to say it, but it's gonna be your king in this particular test that I've done. Then we've got the Klipsch 12SW, which does pretty well. It's, it's, it's okay, it's not the greatest, but it does pretty well on the uh, mid band, but it does good on the lower frequencies. And then let's talk about the Big F12 is another one. And you would say that, oh, that's great, that's good. But my problem with the CEA 2010 testing, bear, bear with me here, is that these are just a single tone, one at a time. If the frequency response of the subwoofer is not linear, then it doesn't really matter if the tones are high. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's just say that you've got a frequency response of a speaker and as you turn up the volume, you know, it, it's gonna start falling off at about, let's say 50 Hertz, okay? Well, it doesn't really matter if the maximum SPL it can hit at 20 Hertz is really high because you know that from the frequency response, it's fallen off a lot between there and 50 Hertz. So it's a balance of trying to read the CEA 2010 measurements and then looking at the frequency response data that I showed you earlier. Now you've seen all the data, you've seen all the extra stuff that I've done. You probably wanna know, okay, Aaron, you, you said all that crap. What does that mean to me? What, what, what do you recommend? Um, well, it's, it's really quite easy. If the Infinity is still on sale for 170 bucks, or even if it somehow jumps to 250 bucks or maybe even 300 bucks, get the Infinity. It has one of the more linear responses and frequency response, and it has some of the higher CEA 2010 numbers. In fact, it has the highest CEA 2010 numbers of the set that I've tested. If that one is not on sale or if it's too costly, random dog hair. Um, yeah, I've got a golden retriever who just sheds all over the freaking place. All right, anyway, if that is too costly or it's not available at all, then as weird as it sounds for me to say, even based on the lower CEA 2010 numbers, I feel like the Yamo is probably still the better subwoofer. Um, so how do you counterbalance that? You know, how do, how do I justify that recommendation with the low, with the low CEA 2010 numbers? Well, Simply frequency response. It's it's a more linear subwoofer than some of the other ones, and it didn't have any internal noise or resonances that I noticed, and I didn't have any issues out of it. And that's important. You don't want a subwoofer that can hit, you know, a bazillion dB at a certain frequency if it's going to buzz at other frequencies. And I didn't have that issue with the Yamo, so for that reason, I like it. And I can't believe I'm saying that out loud, but I actually liked a Yamo subwoofer. Uh, the other thing was the Klipsch. You know, I would have no problem recommending the Klipsch if I had still had power when I plugged it in at a later date, but the sucker, it didn't show up dead on arrival. It just went dead while it was arrived. I'm like, okay. So for that reason, I'm gonna be more hesitant to recommend the clips. Now, I will say that if you're interested in it, then feel free to buy it 
but make sure that you can return it or check out the warranty. Okay. The BIC F12, that's an okay sub. It's not great, but it's got internal resonances at around 50 hertz or 60 hertz. I can't remember now. So for that reason, I personally would not recommend it. The Dayton Sub 1200 is pretty much a go-to for everybody. And I really don't think I've heard anybody say anything negative about it. I didn't really have any issues out of it. It's just that compared against these other subwoofers that I tested, it didn't quite rank up there. It didn't do what I was hopeful that it would do. But I do think that it's a good value at only $170 shipped to your door, assuming that Parts Express is still running free shipping when you plan to order something. The OSD 12 DSP Travoce subwoofer, you know, it looks like it's going to be an awesome subwoofer, but it just didn't quite perform to my expectation. And oddly enough, when the DSP was enabled, it actually did worse. And that didn't make any sense to me. I mean, it just seems counterintuitive, but sure enough, that's exactly what the data showed me. And no, that's not a mistake. I mean, I was there when I tested it. I know what flip I switched. Flip I switched? Switch I flipped. All right. So for that reason, unfortunately, yeah, I cannot recommend the Travoce 12 DSP from OSD. I would probably just not recommend that at all. So then you're left with, you know, the, the other ones that I recommended. And based on price, go for the one that interests you the most. Now, you got to keep in mind foot space and floor space. Another thing that I would really encourage you to do is to consider buying more than one subwoofer. I mean, I'm not saying you have to buy like 20, but buy at least two. And the reason I say that is because if you're using this in a home theater setup, or maybe in a living room setup, as long as you can hide it somewhere and it's not sticking out, that'll be okay. But it's important to understand that when you are listening to just one subwoofer in a room, the response that you're going to get in your main seat is going to be oftentimes very wildly different than you will get in other seats. So your significant other or your kids or, or your family or friends that are coming over to hang out with you, they're not going to get the same experience that you do. And it's important to understand that. If you order two subwoofers, maybe even three, maybe even four, I'm not saying you should, but just the more subwoofers you can add, generally speaking, means that you're going to be able to smooth the response out for all of those seats and have a better impression for you and your guests at each of their individual seats. And that's important. You know, if you want to show off your system, you don't want them to hear something that's terrible while you're sitting there going, hey, well, this sound great. All right. Don't be that guy. So I do encourage you to just look at your budget, look at the results here and think, okay, can I get to, or do I need to wait? And if you need to wait, then wait, or maybe pick another one up later, but definitely consider getting more than one. And I'll drop some reasons for that in my description below as well. And you're more than welcome to go check out the studies that explain to you why more than one subwoofer is a great thing to have. And with all that said, I'm going to wrap this up. I do certainly appreciate you watching. As I said earlier, if you don't mind, if you're interested in buying one of these subwoofers, please use one of my affiliate links as that helps me recoup some of the 1200 bucks that I spent out of pocket here. Also, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And finally, I do want to say thank you to my Patreon patrons. Without you all, you know, kind of motivating me and, and helping me out with paying for some of these things, this video wouldn't be here today. So again, I want to tell you all that I appreciate it and I hope you learned something. I will talk to you later. Peace.